Hi and welcome back. So in this lecture we are going to be setting up our text and links for our ad design. Now this is very important because this becomes the meat and potatoes of your ad design if you will or oats and milk or whatever metaphor you want to use. It is what's going to be grabbing attention and what's going to be making your ad functional. So needless to say important stuff. Let's dive in. All right, so here we are and we are about to start designing this with text and links and we're going to start off by understanding the psychology behind the design here, right? So we need to understand that when people see this ad design that we have to the right here, there is a hierarchy of attention being grabbed. Now the first thing that people are going to see without a doubt is going to be the media, right? If it's an image, it's going to be the image. If there is a video, it's going to be a video. That's the very first thing they see. However, the second thing that they are going to see is going to be the primary text. And this is also important because this is one of those features that allows your ad to look more like an organic and actual post on the, the Facebook newsfeed, right? So the primary text needs to be attention grabbing because it's second in line next to the actual media in grabbing attention, but it also makes sure that it is organic, it grabs the attention and that it makes sense to the product. So we have to understand what is it that we are actually selling here? Well, it's the couple's distance bracelet. So I would write something that is intriguing and that is connecting and gives them a reason to continue reading. So some, it might be something like, for example, uh, love uh, has no distance, for example. And I would make an exclamation mark like that. So most of the time when we write primary text and when we write headlines, we prefer to use capital letters in the beginning just because it makes the text stand out a little bit more. But this is not one of those things that you need to do, right? Some people just like to write it like normal, starting off with a first letter because it can also look more organic, but this also grabs a little bit more attention in my experience. So love has no distance. That might be a nice text. Now we want this to stand out even further. So whenever you're writing a primary text, for your ad design, I always recommend that you use emojis, right? Emojis are these kind of smileys and symbols and make sure that they make sense. So in this case, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add in a heart, right? So I'm going to click on this heart and add it in in the beginning. I'm just going to do it like that. Then I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to the beginning and then I'm going to paste it in here just like that. So as you can see, love has no distance and now this ad is starting to pop a little bit more, right? So that is one of the reasons why it's very interesting to add in this sort of emojis. Now I'm going to make some space like that so it doesn't feel too cramped. So love has no distance, all right? That's interesting and then you see this bracelet. That is quite attention grabbing. Because remember, who is it that we are targeting? Who is our targeted audience and what are we selling? And right now we are targeting people who are in a long distance relationship. So if those people scroll down and they see love has no distance, they are going to feel a connection to that. And that is what we're aiming for here, right? So this is a good primary text to keep. So I'm just gonna keep, uh, stick with it for now. You may be more creative in your text writing. You are going to have to decide on what is going to work for the specific ad and the specific audience that you are aiming towards. Just make sure that it grabs the attention. And then we have the headline. And now we're actually moving on to the ad part. Remember, this still looks like a post, the primary text. But here, the headline, it is right down here, as you can see to the right, where it says headline. This is where we start working on the ad itself. So I'm going to write something like, for example, just something that is going to explain the product because either they're going to be interested or not at this point. If you were selling a service, you might want to continue with this sort of text where you're still luring people in, where you're still grabbing their attention. But because we're selling a product and not a service here, I'm just going to write what it is. I'm going to write couples distance bracelets. Bracelets. There we go, because we're just showcasing one here, right? So couples distance bracelet, there we go. And then in the description, we get the chance to add in some additional information. So we have to understand now we are at the lowest hierarchy of their attention. If they've actually watched our media, read Love Has No Distance, and then seen what you are offering, and now they're also reading the description, you have to understand that this is kind of a make it or break it point, right? Most people are not going to be reaching the description at all. But for those who do, we want to make sure that this connects to them and it makes sense. So I'm going to write something like stay connected to your loved uh, one no matter what. 
something like that. Now, if with a little bit of more time, a little bit of more research, we might target this in even better, but the gist of it is still true, right? We're still trying to explain the benefit to them, to staying connected to your loved one. They are in a distance relationship. We want to make sure that they can stay connected because that's one of the biggest pitfalls when it comes to being in a distance relationship. You're missing that connection. You're missing the other person. So this would be a way to miss them a little bit less or rather to be more connected to them. So that is also the benefit we're trying to sell here, right? So now we have actually done the, the main text for, um, for our ad design, which is very exciting and quite easy too, right? Just using the psychology. Next up, we have the destination. Where do we want people to end up? We can either have them end up on a Facebook event. If we were, for example, doing an event ad and we want them to accept our invitation, we would click on this one, but this is going to be an ad we're going to learn how to create later. Right now, we're trying to send them to our website, right? That's where we're doing this traffic. And then we have the website URL. And the website URL is going to be where do you want to send them when they click on the ad? And in our case, it's very simple, right? We want to send them to our product page. So we want to make sure that when they click the ad, they are going to be getting what they're seeing, right? So we're trying to sell the couple's distance bracelet so they click on it and then they have the ability to read a little bit more about it and purchase the couple's distance bracelet. So in order to do that, we need a URL and the URL is super simple. You just click up here, right click, and then we're just gonna copy it and go down and paste it in here. It's that simple. However, there is one more thing that I want to show you that's really very cool. And I didn't show this beforehand because I don't, I, I'm trying to make things as simple as possible. If you had no media whatsoever, let's clear all of these images for a second. You don't have to follow me here, just check it out. If we clear all of these media images, clearly we don't have anything at all. However, if I add in the website URL here, I just paste it in. Now look at what happens. Facebook actually goes to our page and grabs the first thing it sees on our page, right? On our landing page, which is this product. So that's very cool. So if you're selling a product, but you don't have the media in here, sometimes all you need to do is add in the website URL and you get a beautiful ad just from Facebook grabbing it from your landing page. Now the problem in this case is they're actually grabbing the first photo and the first photo has two bracelets in it and we can see that two bracelets isn't really looking that good because you can kind of see the bottom half of the other one here. But for you who may not have any media or may not have media that looks as good as the one Facebook grabs on the landing page, this is a very quick and effective way to add in the URL uh, from the very get-go and see what does Facebook grab? Do you need to update that media? 95 or maybe 99% of the cases is yes, you do, but sometimes you actually don't because it shows exactly what you want to display, right? So that's all I wanted to show. So all I'm gonna do is just add back the media. All right, so I've added back the media and we're back to where we started. I just wanted to show you that. So with the website URL, what is happening here is when they click on our ad, they are going to end up on this URL, which is the URL to our landing page where they can actually click on buy now and buy the product. That is the, the, the goal of this ad. We're going to talk more later on in the course how to make conversion ads specifically, but starting off with the simplest form of traffic ad, this is our goal, right? So the next thing I wanna show you in here is that when you create multiple ads like we have, we've added in six of them, which is the max you can do when you're creating it in the guided mode like this, but you can actually have an unlimited amount of, um, of ad designs later on. I'm gonna show you how. What happens is that these are only the media designs. So if we look here, we can see the way that it looks with this specific ad set number six, right? But even if I go to ad number one and I click on this one, you can see that the primary text, the headline and the description, they are all the same, right? So when we're creating these different ads, we're just trying out different media. We are not trying out different texts or different headlines or different descriptions. We could do those split tests as well, but then it's better to always use the very same ad image because we only wanna change one thing at a time. Much more about this later on in the course, all right? So know that when you add in multiple images and you get multiple ads like this, you're still using the same primary text, headline and description, and of course, website URL. So then we have pixel is missing for this page, 
don't worry about it, we are going to set pixel up and I'm also going to explain to you what a pixel is in just a couple of lectures, right? Scrolling down, we also have the display link and the display link is just what is going to be showing on the ad. It's not actually where you're going to be taking people, right? So as you can see here, it says rnjdeals.com but the actual URL is rnjdeals.com forward slash collection forward slash bracelet forward slash product forward slash couples dash distance dash bracelets. That wouldn't look very good on the ad here, right? So the display link is just what link do you want to have displayed to the right here. And by default, they're just gonna grab the first of your, um, of your actual website URL, which is rnjdeals.com. And that is usually all we need, right? We're just gonna be fine with that. But we could also change it, we could change it to, I don't know, um, say that we were using another store or going by another name. We could write, for example, um, let's say rnjstore.com. If that is the display link that we want to display, then we could see that now it says rnjstore.com here. Doesn't make a lot of sense generally, does it? So generally what you want to have is actually show the actual URL that is of your store, which is rnjdeals.com in this case. But we do have the ability to change the link should we want to, all right? And finally, we have call to action. And call to action is just the way it sounds. It is what we want them to do. So the call to action is the button to the right here and we can change this and there's a big load of options. So if you're offering an ebook or a digital product, you might want to use download. If you're creating an offer ad, which we're going to do later on in the course, you might want to get offer. If you have a service, especially an expensive service, you might want to use get quote. If you're doing a booking, it could be apply now or book now. Or if you're trying to get leads another way, it could be contact us. There's a lot of different ways, right? Now, one thing that I want to want you to think about is for us, shop now is going to make the most sense because we're very direct in this ad. We're trying to have them buy the actual product, right? That's what we're trying to do here. So if I click on uh, shop now, you can see that the button changes from learn more to shop now. However, I strongly recommend that if you're selling a service, especially if you're selling more expensive services, don't go to the shop now right away. Rather, the more expensive your service is or the more complex your service is or the more unique it is, you're going to have to make your sales funnel bigger. You have more explaining to you. You need to sell them on the idea first. So for those kind of products, I recommend you to use learn more and then take them to a page where they can actually learn more before you try to sell anything on them. That is generally going to severely increase your conversion rates over time, right? But for us, we're very direct here. We have a, a, a decently cheap product and we're trying to sell it to a targeted audience and we just want them to shop now. It's kind of an impulse purchase product we got going right here. So that's how simple it is to set it up and we've designed it with text, we've designed it with a headline, with some more ad text in here and a description and now we have a call to action button, right? And then of course the website URL and that's it. Now in the next lecture we're going to learn how to build a URL parameter and what it is. Now if you don't know what a URL parameter is, this is an advanced function where you can follow statistics and different campaigns. If you don't know what I'm talking about, chances are you don't need it and you can skip the next lecture and then we're going to move straight on to actually setting up our pixel. If you don't know what the pixel is, you're going to learn about that because that is something we do not skip. So if you want to learn about URL parameter, slightly more advanced function, follow me to the next lecture. If not, skip the next lecture and I'll see you at the Facebook Pixel. Regardless, see you in just a little bit.